you can listen to The Front on your smart speaker every morning. To hear the latest episode, just say, play the news from The Australian. From The Australian, here's What's on the Front. I'm Claire Harvey. It's Tuesday, April 2. Companies will be encouraged to employ people with autism and ensure they're represented on boards and in senior management. That's the core idea in a new autism plan from the Albanese government. A new claim today that social media platforms like Facebook should be forced to include news on their platforms to fight misinformation. Meta, the owner of Facebook and Instagram, is refusing to renew its payments to Australian media outlets and is about to shut down its Facebook News tab for Australian users. That story's live right now at theaustralian.com.au. A last-minute drama in the case of Bruce Lehrman versus Network 10. This time, 10 seeking to introduce new allegations against Lehrman just days before Justice Lee hands down his decision in the defamation case. In today's episode, the latest twist and what it all means. Before we begin, this episode contains some adult concepts. If you've ever been to a music festival, you know there's a main stage and lots of sideshows. Often, the sideshows are better than the big ticket. In the case of Bruce Lehrman's defamation action against Network 10, the big ticket is his claim that 10 defamed him by airing Brittany Higgins' allegation she was raped on a couch in Parliament House in 2019. Lehrman firmly denies any sexual activity took place. That main case has become a de facto rape trial, with Brittany Higgins tearfully recounting the moment she was allegedly raped, and Lehrman detailing the devastating effect he says the allegations have had on his life. Network 10 has sought to prove it was reasonable in publishing the allegations, while Lehrman's lawyers have sought to prove 10 was reckless with the truth, failing to investigate what it says were gaping holes in Higgins' story. All that has been pretty heavy duty, but the sideshows have been a lot more colourful. We've seen a cross-claim by Network 10's own journalist, Lisa Wilkinson, demanding the network pay her whopping legal bills up front. She won that claim when 10 caved in, after several days of damaging evidence, including its own legal counsel admitting they encouraged and approved Wilkinson making a Logie's acceptance speech because they wanted to publicly endorse Higgins' claim of rape. We've seen Wilkinson's husband, Peter Fitzsimons, himself a Sydney media identity and former rugby union star, launch an action against Lehrman, demanding he pay the costs of Fitzsimons having to dig through his files for material relating to Brittany Higgins' admission that Fitzsimons helped her negotiate a six-figure book deal. We've had former Senator Linda Reynolds take Higgins and her boyfriend David Shiraz to court in Perth, demanding a defamation payout for social media posts by Higgins and Shiraz. That matters heading to court after the parties got stuck in mediation. There's been an ACT board of inquiry that found prosecutor Shane Drumgold had acted unethically in his pursuit of criminal charges against Lehrman, and then a successful bid by Drumgold to have some of those findings thrown out. And now, just two days out from Justice Lee delivering what's sure to be a whopping judgment in the main defamation matter, another sideshow. Stephen Rice is The Australian's New South Wales editor. Network 10 is seeking to introduce evidence from a former Network 7 producer containing some allegations against Bruce Lehrman. What do we know about this twist in the story? Well, yet another wild, wild development at the last minute, because, of course, Justice Lee is due to hand down his decision in the whole case on Thursday. And yet, right at the death, here we are on Tuesday with this incredible development where a former Channel 7 producer called Taylor Auerbach has given an affidavit to Channel 10 making, it appears, a number of allegations 
Now, we're not entirely sure what's in this affidavit, but the contents of it are strong enough that Channel 10 has applied to the federal court to reopen the whole defamation case. What is the point of this, Ricey? Is this about Bruce Lehrman's credibility? The point of Channel 10 bringing this up is definitely to challenge Bruce Lerman's credibility. Just to go back a bit, Taylor Auerbach was the producer who was assigned the task of getting Bruce Lerman on board for Channel 7's Spotlight program a year and a half ago. Tonight, even more damning revelations and never before heard recordings. So Taylor Auerbach has apparently gone to Channel 10 and made this affidavit with them, which suggests that the evidence that the Spotlight program used in their Lerman program was obtained from Bruce Lerman, which would be in breach of this uh, legal undertaking that they call the Harmon Undertaking. The Harmon undertaking is a principle that parties to a court case agree that any material they obtain in that case can only be used for that purpose. Let's say you're suing your neighbour in court over a fence dispute. If your neighbour is required by the court to hand over all their text messages, you can only use them in the court case to establish the truth of your case. You're not allowed to plaster the messages all over social media or use them as the basis of your tell-all book. The idea is to encourage the truth to come out in legal cases, without anyone fearing that confidential material is going to be used in other forums. In this case, Network 10 is seeking to demonstrate that Lehrman was the source of material used in Seven's Spotlight story, and that this was a breach of the Harmon undertaking, that Lehrman had obtained the material because he was a party to a court case and that he had no right to give it to Network 7. All this is just an allegation at this point. There's no evidence yet before the court. Spotlight's story included previously unseen text messages, footage of Brittany Higgins walking through security at Parliament House, and previously unheard recordings of Higgins and her partner David Shiraz talking to journalists. Those pieces of evidence had not been publicly aired in any court, They'd not emerged in the criminal prosecution of Bruce Lehrman, which was dropped after juror misconduct during the initial trial. But 10 will seek to argue Lehrman had obtained them during court proceedings and that, if he was the source, he did the wrong thing by handing them over. So this evidence, which consists of texts that Brittany Higgins sent, it consists of recordings of a five-hour meeting between Lisa Wilkinson her producer and Brittany Higgins and her partner, David Shiraz. There was a meeting before the main interview which produced some very embarrassing material. Everything seems to operate in dark shadows because the minute you shine a torch on any of it, it's as ugly as sin. We heard Lisa Wilkinson disparaging various politicians. We heard the whole group talking about how they might get this case in front of their Labor friends to make political capital out of it. Oh, certainly Albo. Yeah. Um, Tony Flavisek, definitely. Because yeah. we, or we need like a, I don't know, we get Grace Tame doing the media the next day. Or so. You need someone who's... Yeah. And now we have Taylor Auerbach, who was the producer who got Lerman on board, saying, well, it was Lerman himself who provided this to us. Lerman, if that is the case, and there's no evidence that it was, but if that's the case, that would have been very improper of Lerman to do. But more importantly, Lerman has denied doing it to the defamation court. And that's where his problem could be. Apparently, this is the allegation in this affidavit that's about to be presented to the court on Tuesday. Of course, this is about the journalism of Network 7, a rival network to Network 10. One of the most sacred principles of journalism is protection of sources and refusing to reveal who your source is. There's even some legal protection for confidential sources. Do we think Network 7 will seek to be represented on this and try to stop this material getting into this trial, Ricey? 
The last I heard, Channel 7 was deep in discussion about whether it would seek leave to appear at this new extraordinary hearing. But my understanding is that Channel 7 would have very little legal grounds to do so. And in any event, Justice Lee has made it very clear throughout the entire proceedings that he wants the whole case to be out in the open. He's made it very clear that the principles of open justice apply rigorously in this case, that nothing is going to be hidden. We've seen various examples throughout the trial where some fairly controversial material has been allowed into evidence. And Justice Lee has said, I'm sorry, but this is going to happen. In my court, everything's going to be out in the open. So I think Channel 7 would have very little chance of suppressing this affidavit. Coming up, so what is going to happen on Thursday when Justice Lee hands down his findings? We break down all the possibilities. While I've got you, the Australian subscribers will be the first to know the results on Thursday and we'll have live coverage and up-to-the-minute analysis. Join our subscribers at theaustralian.com.au and we'll be back after this break. Ask a handful of people how Thursday's judgment will go and you'll get a handful of answers. Ultimately, what it comes down to is whether Bruce Lehrman raped Brittany Higgins inside Parliament House in 2019. Justice Michael Lee's decision, based upon the evidence presented over the course of the month-long defamation trial brought by Lehrman against Network 10 and Lisa Wilkinson, will have consequences for everyone. Legal experts told The Australian's Janet Albrechtson there are five possible outcomes. First, Bruce Lehrman wins. Or, in another way of looking at it, Tennant Wilkinson failed to prove the allegation made by Higgins was true and that they did the right thing in airing it in the project interview in 2021. Tonight, claims of rape, roadblocks to a police investigation and a young woman forced to choose between her career and the pursuit of justice. And it all happened right in the heart of our democracy. Brittany Higgins says the government betrayed her. In that scenario, Lehrman will likely be awarded damages, money, by Justice Lee. How much is anybody's guess? Although Ten has argued that even if Lehrman wins, he should only get a dollar because they say he has lied to the court throughout the proceedings, something Lehrman denies. If the judge finds the controversial speech given by Lisa Wilkinson at the Logies is in the same basket, he could award Lehrman what's called aggravated damages, more money, to compensate for the impact on his reputation. After 40 years in journalism, this interview and this story is by far the most important work I have ever done. And I knew it from the very first phone call I had early last year with a young woman whose name, she told me, was Brittany Higgins. The second possible outcome is basically the reverse. In that case, Justice Lee finds, based on the evidence presented by Ten, that Brittany Higgins was raped and that the network's reporting of it was fair and accurate. If that happens, Lehrman doesn't get anything, but he will have to pay Ten's costs and maybe his own legal fees. The third option available to Justice Lee is somewhere in the middle of one and two, and that's if he finds that sex did occur, but it wasn't rape. Remember, Lehrman has always said he had no sexual contact with Higgins whatsoever. So, if Michael Lee lands here, he's basically saying Ten half-proved its case and Lehrman lied. And that will mean Lehrman gets the technical win, but likely not the financial win, because any damages will be significantly reduced or even voided. He could still be on the hook for Ten's legal costs in that scenario too. Scenario four is a bit of a spin, that Justice Lee finds that Lehrman's lying was bad, but Wilkinson's Logie speech was worse. And the truth is, this honour belongs to Brittany. It belongs... It belongs to a 26-year-old woman's unwavering courage. It belongs to a woman... In that case, Lehrman could receive aggravated damages. And lastly, the judge could hand down a judgment that has a bit of everything. He might say, 
10 didn't prove Higgins' allegation and therefore was irresponsible in broadcasting it, but he might agree that Lisa Wilkinson didn't have any control about what made it into the final program and what didn't. If that happens, Lehrman will still be financially rewarded and Lisa Wilkinson could walk away with a moral victory because it follows that she couldn't have known she was stirring up trouble with the speech if she wasn't calling the shots in the broadcast. Justice Lee has also made it clear all the way along that there are problems with the credit of both Bruce Lehrman and Brittany Higgins, that there are aspects of their evidence that he doesn't believe and isn't going to accept. What more difference do you think it's going to make to that question of Lehrman's credit, Ricey, if, let's say, the judge does accept that he gave some false evidence about whether he provided some material to Network 7? So I think there's a clue in the fact that Justice Lee has not vacated the Thursday date for his judgment. So judgment day, if you like, is still on. Now that suggests to me and suggests to various lawyers that I've spoken to that this hearing on Tuesday is not going to substantially affect the judgment that he gives on Thursday. And if that's the case, then that also suggests good news, I think, for Channel 10 and bad news for Bruce Lerman. If Justice Lee was thinking about changing course dramatically, he would be thinking about vacating the Thursday date for his judgment in the defamation matter. Ricey, while this has been swirling around, my thoughts have gone out to Justice Lee. He's the one of us who actually has to pick his way through this and make some sort of sense out of this very confusing, very complex set of arguments and questions. He seems up to the job, though, doesn't he? He does. If you had to have any judge sitting in judgment on a case like this, I think Justice Lee is your man. Personally, I would find it pretty much impossible to make a decision on the basis of the evidence that I've heard to come to a definite conclusion that Bruce Lerman is a rapist or to come to a definite conclusion that he is not. So how he decides this matter on the evidence so far. Honestly, I'm glad it's him and not me. Stephen Rice is The Australian's New South Wales editor. Today at The Australian, we've got an exclusive look inside the training camp where Australian soldiers are training elite Ukrainian personnel to take on Russia's invading force. You can find that story right now at theaustralian.com.au. 